Hi friends, how are you? Welcome to the Transformation Unlimited YouTube channel. Your mentor Jayaprakash Nagati Haldi is reading his own book, Fear Not Failures, Chapter 3, Success Stories of the Disabled. Very interesting, very motivating. Okay, just do listen. Beethoven, 1770-1827. The German composer was stone deaf. Yet, he rose very high in the world of Western music. His musical compositions are of the best quality and have the touch of a genius. How he managed to become a splendid composer in spite of his physical disability is a wonder of wonders. Sudha Chandran is an exquisite dancer. Her Bharatanatyam performance attracted huge crowds of admirers, knowledgeable critics and privileged artists. But as ill luck would have it, she lost one of her legs in a car accident. Many thought that would be the end of her career as an artist. But her resolve to be back on the stage was irrevocable. After full recovery, she went in for an artificial leg and quickly learned first to walk and then to run. After full acclimatization, she practiced to put the right dance steps with her artificial leg. In a short while, because of constant and devoted practice, her dance steps were in perfect accord with thala, the beat of music, and she was perfectly satisfied. Here, Along, along she resumed her professional performances. They became an astounding success. Nobody could even guess that she had an artificial leg. Based on her astounding life, a film was made in Telugu called Mayuri and was dubbed in Hindi and called Nache, Nache Mayuri. In both the films, Sudha Chandran herself played the lead role. Needless to say that both the films were splendid to watch. Arunima Sinha was a national level volleyball and football player from Uttar Pradesh. Once when she was traveling in a train, she was attacked by thieves trying to snatch a gold chain. When she tried to save herself from the clutches of the thieves, she was thrown out of the compartment by them. She fell onto the tracks of the parallel line. An oncoming train crushed her left leg, which later had to be amputated. It took two years for her to recover and have prosthesis. Today, she has climbed Mount Everest with her artificial leg. Her grit and determination made it possible. Malati Holla is a physically challenged athlete of international fame. Her specialities are javelin, shot put, and discus throw. She has won both the national and international repute and recognition. She has also been awarded the Padma Shri title by the government of India. Her philosophy of life is that a physically challenged person should not be disheartened by his or her ability, disability but should resolve to excel others who are better endowed. He said, he or she should cultivate courageousness both in speech and action and be determined to march to forward without hindrance. Our well-considered advice to physically challenged people is worth quoting. A physically challenged woman will be mentally strong our ability to face and bear sufferings will be greater than a man's. If God has denied the full use of one limb, he would have doubled the strength of other limb or organs. Accept the state and condition in which God has placed you and resort to achieve the best with your available endowments. Don't worry about the morrow. Live in the living present. Think only of today and remember that the all-merciful Almighty will have provided you with a sixth sense if you are physically challenged. The story of little 
Babita is quite fascinating. She was born in a hamlet called Hankarjalu, just three kilometers away from the village uh, uh, Gargadi of Belthangadi Taluk of South Kenara in Karnataka. A charming and attractive girl, no doubt, both, but both, both her hands were defunct. She practiced writing with the help of her toes and succeeded marvelously. Her clear and beautiful handwriting baffled even calligraphists. She scored 72% marks in 10th standard public examination. That attracted the attention of the government and of public bodies who honored and admired her willpower, inventiveness, and dexterity. Dr. Parameshwaran was an outstanding medical student. Just before his final exam, he lost the vision, vision of both his eyes owing to a rare disease. But Parameshwaran was not the type to sit and mourn. He worked relentlessly, gained recognition and honors. He obtained national award as well and became friend, philosopher, and guide to many aspiring medical students. Madhu Singhal's story is even more amazing. Though blind, she not only educated herself, but also devoted in her entire life to educate others. She founded an institution aptly named Mitra Jyoti, Friendly Light, to help blind people get education. She produced audio tapes in which all learning materials were recorded and distributed them to the needy. The author of the original Kannada book says, I had the good fortune to endure on behalf of her TV station on two occasions. The manner in which she answered my queries clearly indicated that she was a woman of indomitable self-trust and self-confidence. Yes, friends, even I have honored uh, from our organization, Nagama Foundation, by honoring with the Nagama Award. Now, an example from home turf. The late lamented Balakrishna, Balanna, as he was known to Kannada cinema goers, was a splendid actor. He played a variety of roles from a trimly dressed aristocratic gentleman to a hungry beggar dressed in torn rags. And his performance in every role was super. His ready wit and repartee were astounding. But he was uh, born stone deep and had been abandoned not only by his parents, but also by relatives soon after birth. He grew up under God's protection, shaped his own career, rose very high in the profession and became a role model to all orphans and disabled people. Demosthenes, 384 to 322 BC. This Athenian statesman and director proved to the world that eloquent speech power and a rhetorical cleverness are infinitely superior to administrative talent. Immediately after his birth in 384 BC, the astrologers predicted that he would become an extraordinary important man in public life. But as he grew up, it became evident that he had a born physical disability. He was a stammerer. Consequently, he became the butt of ridicule to his classmates. The death of his father compounded his difficulties. For his uncle, taking advantage of the orphan's helplessness, appropriated the boy's entire immovable property for his own use. Though the boy sought legal restitution through a court of law, he got no relief. The boy grew up wading through a sea of difficulties. As a young man, he was highly impressed by the eloquence and oratory of a great Greek speaker. That made him Demosthenes to cultivate assiduously the art of eloquence. To overcome his physical disability of stammering, he started practicing eloquence with a tiny stone in his mouth. He was unable to utter long sentences uninterruptedly. His utterance became clear and limpid. 
then he started climbing tall hills and descending steep mountains that was intended to enable him to take deep breaths and control them he stood facing the roaring sea and shouted loudly out doing the sound of the billowing waves he started studying greek epics and law books and devoted 16 hours of the day to those studies he avoided human company for this purpose he made himself look unseemly and confined himself to the cellar he used to stand before a huge mirror and watch his own gesticulations and body language for three long years he practiced speaking and when he came out of his solitary confinement he was hailed as a mighty scholar a wonderful orator and a person of solid substance and lofty stature he was held in the highest respect by all athenians that was what the greek king philip meant when he declared that one can conquer the entire world but one cannot even hope to match the eloquence and oratorial oratorical skill and ability of demosthenes that skill and ability was not a god's gift but the remarkable fruit of his grim determination patience perseverance and personal effort milton 1608 to 1674 just as the shakespeare was the greatest playwright john milton was the greatest poet that england produced his sole ambition as a poet was to write a very great epic in english equal to the epics of homer and virgil to accomplish this great ambition he started studying entire books in greek latin and english after obtaining his master degree from cambridge university in his 18th year he started equipping himself earnestly for the mighty task that he had set before himself this meant tremendous strain on his eyes though involved in the rough and tumble of politics of the time he did not neglect or forget the lofty aim he had set for himself his wide ranging studies travels to the lands of homer and virgil and active participation in the politics of the age made him blind in 1652 when he was just 44 when the political condition changed and charles charles ii was restored to the throne of england milton's life and liberty were in danger but the large hearted merry monarch of england charles ii spared milton's life this made milton breathe freely and take up his intended task of writing the epic poem though totally blind he dictated line after line of three monumental books paradise lost paradise regained and samson agnostus though dictated by a blind man paradise lost is a magnificent epic running into thousands of lines of splendid blank verse milton the blind poet's poetic achievement reminds us of the military icon napoleon in spite of his epileptic fits he rose to be the greatest soldier planner and conqueror Here is an example of a girl of 16 who was uh, lying in a hospital bed with a fractured backbone. She had to write an examination which would determine her entire future. She was carried to the examination hall on a stretcher and she wrote the examination for 6 or 7 days lying on the stretcher. She did really well in the exam as a result of her grim determination and unrelenting will power. we conclude this section with the remarkable achievement of a deaf girl of bihar shilpi jaiswal aged 18 she was born completely deaf medical experts said that she had german measles while she was in the mother's womb which had caused her deafness 
but this disability did not come in the way of her very active life till she was 7 years of age she used to swim for her 7 hours a day when the doctor advised her against it she turned to tennis in which she became proficient in the 2006 British Open Championship for the Deaf, she became the champion. She was the very first Indian to participate in the tournament. Though the medical opinion is that the hearing of a deaf person's decibel count should not be less than 55, that is also the norm in the games, Sh Shilpi Jaiswal's count was more than 75. Even then, she participated in an international championship and one laurels in spite of that great disability. It is very important to develop willpower. Whoever it be, and whichever field it be, a person's strong willpower and determination to achieve the intended goal fructifies in spite of any physical disability. So this is the end of chapter three of uh, Fear Not, Failures. Okay, this is my own book. Okay, get ready to watch the chapter four, <laughs> the fear not failures in the next video. And do comment how you felt about this chapter. I think this chapter has motivated you well. Am I correct? Do respond through a comment. If you have not yet subscribed to our channel, Transformation Unlimited and Jaya Prakash Nakhtali, do it right now. Like share or comment. Bye-bye.